Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back for another episode of the Kerbal Space Program tutorial series. Now, we're going to take this craft that we flew in the last mission, and as you will recall, we were about halfway through this tank down here when we ha had achieved a successful orbit. So we're going to modify it a little bit. Not very much. We're going to use the same number of parts, maybe a little bit more space duct tape, but we're going to get it to go higher. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this and I'm going to turn it on to a dual symmetry instead of the six symmetry. We're still going to have six of these, clearly, but we're going to place them down a little bit differently. I'm also going to grab a hold of the space tape that we had as well as these fuel lines and get rid of them for now. We'll grab those in a minute. Now, if you hold down the Alt key, you can left click on something and copy it. And that includes all parts that are parented to the part that you're manipulating. So fortunately, with the six symmetry, it's fairly simple to get these lined up here. We want it to be right about there, and good. And now we will hold down the Alt, grab another one, get it into position yeah, like so. And there we go. Just like that, we have our perfect six symmetry again. Now, we're going to use the fuel ducts, only instead of having them all go into the central stack, we're going to run it around the outside before we send it to the inside. This is what's called the asparagus stock. Now, I find the asparagus stock to be the most effective method for getting large objects into space, making your fuel last longer, and just as a general rule, it flies better when you're trying to get big objects up there. And let's face it, who doesn't want to have a big object in space? Because that means less flights and bigger space stations and more fun. And by fun, I mean things exploding. All right, so now as you can see, we have the fuel transferring from here to here, and then to here, and then into the central stock on both sides. So that will provide us with a, a little bit of a dual symmetry, essentially is what we're working with here. So now we're going to find the space duct tape again, and we're going to, yet again, attach these together. I'm going to do the same attachment method for the final fuel tank. This is going to be the first one that drops off here. However, for the others, I'm going to change it up a little bit because they're going to wind up being all by themselves pretty quickly here. So we're going to attach this guy straight into the center, and then again on the other side because he's going to be the last fuel stack to leave. So we want to make sure that even when he's all by his lonesome up here, he's still fairly stable. Now, since he's going to be here, we can just attach from here to here like we did initially, and then attach this guy to the center stack again, and that way we have ensured that he still has two connections to the main trunk before he actually gets jettisoned. All right, so that is essentially all the changes that we're going to make. There is a little bit of st additional staging that has to be done here to make sure that this functions properly, but that's not very difficult to do. The first thing you're going to want to do is locate the first stage that's going to get dumped. In this case, it's this thing here. It's this decoupler. So you can see how it highlights over on the right side. So I'm going to open up a, a new stage here, and I'm just going to left click on it once to open it up, and then drag it down like so. And then just mouse over it to confirm. It's now in its first stage all by itself. We have the rocket launch, and then this stage decouples. Now we're going to want to move on to the second stage, which will be the next one in the fuel line. Looks like that one's actually at the top of the list. So we're going to gra grab him and drag him down. And it looks like there was a little bit of a goof up in the staging here, but I'm willing to guess that this other one all by himself, yeah, he's the one on the other side. So we're gonna drag him down here into five as well. And then number four, if we can get that one to unlight up, there we go. Number four is the final stage before we, ooh, release this bottom fuel stack and then the activate the engine here but if anything goes to show what this does, we won't even have to do that again. We won't be using any of the fuel up here. This is basically just a dead weight for now. All right, so save and launch. Have a launch pad and proceed, please. So if you could understand the basic concept behind this, this works with even the really big fuel tanks. It works pretty well with those. Uh, if you do it with the big fuel tanks, though, their increased amount of thrust can cause problems. So I highly recommend attaching some space tape, specifically from the tops of the stacks that are on the sides here, and bringing them and attaching them to the stage above the central stack stage that they're actually pushing fuel into in order to support the rest of the craft so that it doesn't collapse in on itself because you can wind up accelerating too quickly as the fuel tanks start to get emptied. All right, so we're going to lock in the SAS, turn on the fuel. We're just going to leave it at maximum throttle and away it goes. 
So we're just going to leave this at maximum throttle and see how high we can get on this uh, using the asparagus stock method versus what we previously used. We've got Bob Kerman here flying with us, and there's not much going to happen here for a little while. The first set of tanks are probably going to deplete fairly quickly, but this is a small, light craft, so we're all going 100 and, already going 130 meters a second, and we still haven't finished those tanks off. Pretty decent, pretty decent. All right, keep watching it. It'll be these ones here, and away they go. So that's it. And now we are continuing to travel. You'll notice how uh, we quit accelerating there for a moment, but very quickly it takes back over again with the four engines, and we start accelerating again quite a bit. This may seem a little bit weird, but what's happening is you're dumping off weight as you don't need it. And it winds up being more fuel efficient in the long run because you have less weight to lift. 210 meters a second. Again, I highly recommend you don't go this fast if you're wielding a bigger ship because it causes vibrations. The small ships don't really care very much, but the big ones, vibrations tend to get amplified and then your ship just well, explodes in on itself. All right, so we're approaching stage six. These ones burned off with a little bit less gusto than the last ones, but they still got go away pretty quickly. These next ones are, you're going to see a much more significant slowdown in fuel consumption. And there they go. All right, now we're going 420 meters a second at 19,000 above the surface. And we've still got all of these completely full of fuel here. I'm going to begin doing a gravity turn. Um, and we're going to do a full gravity turn because we are going, oh, 500 meters a second here already. There's no reason not to. And a full gravity turn is a 45 degree angle to the side, essentially. So we're going to lock it in right there and just begin burning. And as you can see, if we all open up the map view, we have an apoapsis of 60k already. And this is just going to go and go and go. We only have to get to about 2,000 meters a second here before we will be successfully traveling in an orbital pattern. And since our apoapsis has actually reached uh, the point above 60,000 meters, we are going to turn all the way over because we're going to get out into space. Now all we need to make sure of doing is that when we get out into space, that we're traveling at at least 2,000 meters a second. That's all we have to do. So there we go, and we'll begin burning. You're going to want to try to hold on to the horizon. It's going to push your apoapsis away from you, but that's what we want. So we're burning, we're burning, we're burning, and 1,600 meters a second already. We are very close. Now we're about ready to dump off our other fuel tanks here. All right, and there you go. And now, as you can see, these fuel tanks are all still completely full. It's just this one that's now draining. And we are very, very close to achieving an orbit here at 1,900 meters a second. 167, 68, 69, 70. Very, very close to an orbit here. And we're currently pushing the apoapsis out. Um, normally, I would probably shut off the engines and go out to an apoapsis. In fact, I think that's exactly what we're going to do. We're trying to do advanced tactics here, right? So what's and one of the advanced tactics we learned last time? Simple. You're going to have much more success at the apoapsis than you will at the periapsis because you're traveling more slowly. You're able to affect your velocity much better. So we've got about six minutes. We're going to hit the time accelerate here because we are in space now, so we can accelerate without having to worry about uh, things doing something skilly wonkas. And right about a minute from the apoapsis, good to go. Now, as you can see, the direction of travel has moved a little bit, but that's because the planet is orbiting underneath us. Uh, we are not uh, changing our direction. We are changing our, our direction is locked into space, but the planet itself is rotating. So if I can actually get this under control, it's, wow, it really wants to rotate. All right, and right about there. Okay, and now we will begin burning again. You can see how it has slowed us down to about 17. There's 1,800. But we only have to get to 2,000, and we're going to be there very quickly. As you can see, we've almost got our orbit here. The periapsis is at 60,000, and that's it. There's the orbit. Almost exactly at 2,000. Okay, fine, 2,000. And don't, oh, come on. Doink. Okay, close enough. Close enough. Okay, so as you can clearly see, the tank that was half gone the last time we were up here in an orbit is now full. And the other tank 
about half full, just a little bit underneath half full. So if we wanted to, we could very easily send this to another planet. If you were to get the right trajectories, the right angles, it probably even has enough fuel to land. And this is a small stage rocket using the tiny engines and the tiny fuel tanks. And you could take it to another planet? Hmm. If you can apply these tactics to the larger fuel tanks and use the same size lander here, you could get a bigger lander up and still take it to another planet. Maybe even bring along a few extra Kerbals and some scientific equipment. Thank you for joining me for this episode on advanced tactics on getting your spacecraft into the air, the Asparagus Stock Edition. Thank you for joining me.